So today we're going to talk about making necklaces with cabochons. Cabochon is a clear glass dome that goes over the top of a piece of art or a design, and it make, magnifies the design and protects it. Here's an example. This one's an eye. I mean, you know, and I'm going to, sh I'll, I'll go in more depth. You can make cabochons from photographs. You can make cabochons from cutouts from comic books. I've seen that a lot. Basically any piece of art that's about the size of the pendant and cabochon you have. So we're going to get right into it. So here we have some examples of pendants and cabochons. The cabochons just go in the pendants. You have to make sure you get the sizes that match. Um, so they fit in, they, so they fill the whole, they fill the whole pendant. I have two different kinds of cabochon. I have cabochons that are thin and you'll see the difference uh, when we, when we put them on. What I have done is I, I went to Amazon. I bought a box, 64 piece pendant set, clear round cabochon, clear round domes and, um, and pendants. And so there are actually two different styles of pendant in here and uh, two different styles of cabochons to match. We have the kind of antique portrait -y kind, and we have cabochons that fit right in there. But the reason that I'm demoing these cabochons today is because this size is just a little harder to operate. For now, we're gonna set these aside and talk about the round ones, because that's a little bit easier. So these round cabochons are 25 millimeter. I bought these cabochons and pendants as a set. You can buy them separately if you want, but you just have to make sure you match the sizes. Uh, some of them are in metric, some of them are in uh, imperial measurements, and um, so you can have some problems. This is the one that I put together for this tiger eye. I thought it was really pretty, and um, I have I bought a bag of cabochons with that are all eyes, but you know it's it's a, it's a whole set of different eyes that you can that you can use. I thought they were really cool. Um, I'm gonna make a few of them. See how that goes. Maybe I'll try my luck at uh, selling them once I've made them. I don't know. These are pre-glued cabochons. They come assembled already, so you don't have to do anything. You just pop them in. But what I want to show you is I want to show you how to make custom cabochons so that you can have images that meet, are meaningful to you. Um, so what I, what I did was I bought a punch, which is one inch, and I printed out some pictures. Here's a, here's a photograph. This is my family my daughter and uh, my wife. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the picture so you, so you can put, slip it in here inside like this, and then you can center it and see how it's centered. Get it just the way you like it, you know, move it up, move it down. And then I think that looks cute. And it gets cut out. You just put it in there. Um, typically, you do it with you do it with a little bit of glue. You make sure you have clear glue. That's not hard. That's not too hard to find. So you just cut it, cut out a picture, pop it in, pop the cabochon on top, and you have a customized pendant of my daughter. And so then, normally I put glue just like this on the bottom too. So this glue starts off white and dries clear. I'll sh I will show you after uh, it dries. So this project, you know, th this project, as you can see, it was super easy. You just have to get all the pieces together and then you can make your own customized pendant necklaces. It's pretty cool. Twisted it just a little bit to get glue spread out evenly because I don't want any bubbles. And so you can still, still the glue, the glue has not yet dried, so it still is unclear. I'm going to hold it like this for a minute or two just to make sure that the uh, glue gets a chance to set a little bit before I let it go and it try to release a little bit, um, but if you let it set, it won't. And a little bit of glue, I put a little bit too much glue on it, so, so you got to wipe off the excess. So I, I'm using a special kind of glue. This is the best glue that I have for this application. I don't know if you necessarily need it, but, uh, but this is the glue. It's called Micro Crystal Clear. 
It's for modeling, and it's apparently it's used for making windows, window surfaces, or not window surfaces, but windows for model houses and model cars. Um, I've never used it for that, but I have used it for um, different projects. It says, microcrystal clear is a flexible clear liquid plastic adhesive and model window forming material. Joins most dissimilar materials and is especially useful on clear plastic parts for nearly invisible joints. Will not cause crazing of clear parts. Crazing is, is what happens like with super glue when it gets white, when it, uh, kind of, it kind of melts plastic. It's called crazing and it'll melt plastic and make it a little hazy. And so this is, this is good for using on, on places where you need a crystal clear. There's probably also lots of, lots of other glues. I'm sure there's jeweler's glue. That's perfect for this. If you go into a bead store and ask them, I'm sure they'd have recommendations and I'm pretty sure you can find this on Amazon. And if not, I'll put a link to where you can find it in the description. So that is basically the process. I'm going to show you one more because. I want to show you this thicker cabochon. It's, it's pretty cool how it works. Um, so we have this little picture and when you put it on, if you, if you notice it makes things look bigger, it magnifies. So that's a nice way to met, to give your image a little more pop. So I'm just going to do that again. You know, you find the spot you want with these ones. It's probably more important to put your image right in the center of of the circle because that that will mean that it magnifies it a little more evenly uh, i'm just going to i'm going to show you without without gluing it because i want you to see the magnification i'm going to put a little glue on because i want to i want to keep this one so just i just put a little glue in there put the picture as i want it And then, so you can see with the small cabochon, there's a magnification effect for sure. And that's one of the reasons that these necklaces with cabochons on them look so good because of that magnifying effect, I, I think. And then with the big one, boom. Yeah. I think that's super cool. And I'll glue this one together later. I'm going to think about whether or not I want to use this big cabochon or not. The The optics on it are, are a little different. So from the side, you see it kind of distorts a little bit uh, and isn't as isn't doesn't work as well. I'll show you the other one from the side, too. Oops. Try that again. I'll show you the other one from the side, too. See it. You have to you have to go. You have to go kind of a lot farther. To not be able to see the image inside. But this is a good a good lesson not to put too much glue. You don't need much glue. As you as you do these, you'll learn how much glue is the appropriate amount. I think this is a really good idea for a gift that if you want to do a project with a kid, um, you know they can operate the punch. They could do the glue. They could do the basically the whole thing. So here's the deal. Now I now I remembered the pendant and the cabochon are twenty five millimeters. An inch is 25.4 millimeters. So the hole punch that I got, which is an inch, is slightly bigger than the, the pendant and the cabochon. That's why it kind of, well, I don't think, I don't know if you can actually really see it. Let's see. If... It doesn't quite fit in. It, you, need, you need to kind of push it down a little bit, but but that's okay. It's not going to show the very edges of the um, picture won't, won't be visible uh, because, because of the optics of the, of the cabochon. I hope I'm saying that right word, right? I hope I haven't mutilated that word the hundred times I've said it during this, uh, during this video. I am. So I bought these, I bought these thicker cabochons because I, I wanted to try them out. I don't like the optics for the, for the purposes of this one. Uh, so I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use it for the picture of my wife. Put it on. I'm going to hold this down two or three minutes to make sure the glue sets. So there's no, uh, so there won't be any, any bubbles. So that's it. That's the project. It's really easy. Um, these with these pre-made, with these pre-made cabochons and pit with images in them already, you just glue them down simple as pie. And then, um, with the customized ones, 
that you want to do, you just cut a circle out of a picture that you have and bang, you got it. You could do it with pictures of almost anything. Even that one drop was too much, was, was considerably more than I needed because the glue is starting to run out the sides. Just like, don't be too generous with your glue. Here we go for our final thoughts and wrap up on this video. It's a couple days later. I've made a couple of new pendants. I just wanted to kind of talk, uh, give my final thoughts. One thing that I would do is I would make sure that I have more exact compatibility between the sizes of my hole punches and my pendants. This hole punch, I'll just cut, I'll cut a simple cut out there. This hole punch punches a different shape of oval than the pendant requires. And so you have to trim it down by hand each time. It's not a big deal. Um, if you look, it's not just not the same size. It's not long enough and it's too wide. Um, and that's just because ovals are different. Um, I mean, it might be a problem with just trying to make ovaloid ones. Maybe there's some way to get more exact measurements or something like that, but I just don't know what it is right now. So I wasn't quite very happy with that. I would probably work harder to get a match um, because making these pendants is, har is harder because they're not quite the right size. I mean, we can just see what happens if I just force it. Maybe it'll turn out okay. You don't notice any problems. Can't really see the very, very edges of the picture because the curve of the cabochon at the edges makes it harder to see. Bring it in focus again. See, you can't really, oh, you can actually down at the bottom there. There's the black, there's a the black line down there, right there. So I would, I would make sure that my cabochons and my, and my cutters are the same size on this one. Okay. Do you see that discoloration, the white dots right there and there, that's a fold in the picture caused by forcing the, the inch wide picture into the 25 millimeter pendant, you know, deformed the, deformed the picture a little bit. And so you can cut, you can kind of see it. It's not very visible and it, it could be mistaken just for a trick of the light, but you know, having exactly the right size cutter would be a better idea. Maybe it's really hard to find one inch pendants instead of 25 millimeter ones. I wasn't able to find matches. So there's that. The second point I want to make about these is the process that I laid out is you, you take the, you take the pendant, where's, you take the pendant, you lay down glue on the back, you put the, you put the picture on top of the glue. You put the, you put a little bit of glue between the cabochon and the, and the picture, and then you put the picture down on top of it. One of the things that I had to do was, was hold it for a while while the glue dried. And that was kind of hard because, you know, because it takes a while. It's, it's a process that takes 10 or 15 minutes. What I ended up doing was I used, I used this, I used this, uh, well, I don't know what it's called. I'm going to look it up and put it in text. It's an adjustable, it's an adjustable wrench. You can change the size of the opening. See how it's getting bigger and bigger, smaller and smaller. And then you can get it right down to exactly the right size for it. I put a piece of paper. Uh, I put a, I put, actually took, I took a piece of folded cardstock and I, placed it on the top and the bottom of this. And then I put the, the, or the pliers on it. And that allowed, that allowed me to hold them shut for a while, which stopped the air bubbles from appearing. This one is one that I didn't do it on. Let's see if I can get this back in focus again. Uh, and I don't know if you can actually see it, but the air bubbles, well, you can a little bit like the, like the reflection uh, the reflection. Oh, there you go. You can, you can, now you can kind of see it in the background of the, ref of the, of this area where the air bubbles are. And so it doesn't, it doesn't look perfect. There's an air bubble on her chin as well. It's hard to see. There you go. You can kind of see it there. Um, so you you need to, you need to squish, you need to squish them. When you squish them, the glue comes out the edges and so you have to wipe it off. And depending on what kind of glue you use, that can be easier or harder, which takes me to my next subject, the glue. At first I used micro crystal clear. This is a good glue and will work, but my feeling is that it takes too long to dry. And so I, I used a couple different other kinds of glue. 
I use I use Diamond Glaze, which is a water-based dimensional adhesive. I liked Diamond Glaze. It dries clear, just like the Micro Crystal Clear. I like this glue. It by the time I started using this glue, I was using the 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 these vi that vice wrench method of of stopping the air bubbles, and so the dry time didn't matter as much. But this worked out really well. Diamond Glaze or Micro Crystal Clear, probably both either would work. Either would work. The other glue that I tried was. E6000, which is uh, one of, a very, very popular crafting glue. I highly, highly recommend you get this in your toolbox as soon as possible if it's not there already. I did some of these with it. One problem I had with the E6000 is it's very viscous, and so I wasn't able to remove the air bubbles just by pinching the pinching the pendant. And but the the vice the vice plant the vice pliers worked well to do that. So if you don't have vice vice pliers it might be better to use something like diamond glaze which is a little more liquidy and you can you can use the power of your hands to remove the air bubbles and you just have to hold it for a while to till it kind of gets a little more dry oh i did want to show you the other ones the other ones that i did um i made this i made this uh i had this i had this photograph of ravens up in a uh, or crows up in a tree and i took some cutouts of that and so I, on this one i used the larger um the larger cabochon the the big one and honestly with this picture it actually looks quite it actually looks quite good even from the side um i don't remember exactly what problem i what i or i don't i don't understand what the problem was before uh but even from the side you can still you can see you can see what the image is until you get way over to the side and then it's you know but but like not being able to see it from this side is fine because you can see it from here and here and here and here and here and here. I think that looks good. This was a piece of this was a picture of a piece of embroidery my mother did. It's a bird. I don't know if you can see it. It's not it's not the greatest example of a of a dynamic picture because the colors are the colors are kind of muted in the same in the picture. But then I also and then I also did this one and it kind of looks like it might have the big cabochon on it, but it doesn't. It's just a the the picture of my daughter was too big. Uh, and so I had to just cut it down and make like one that looks looks like that. I didn't mind. It was just for an example for you guys. So this will just be a little souvenir for me. So that's it. Oh, and I also got a chain for I got a chain for this one. Oh, oh, this is another thing I wanted to say about the micro crystal clear. The micro crystal clear. Let's see if I can get this in focus. Do you see? You might not be able to see it in the in the video, but there's haze. There's like a white haze around the outside of the um, of the picture. And so it's not it's not the clearest, and I mean it it it's hard it's really hard to to pick up in uh, in the video. But let me see if I can. Do you see you see how the background is kind of faded out, and the area over here is kind of looks a little ghostly. I don't know what did that. Um, the micro crystal clear usually dries totally clear and it did in in several other examples this one this one this one these two were both made with the micro crystal clear and there was no there's no white um but in this one it's just a little hazy and so i might not recommend the micro crystal clear i might go with the diamond glaze instead which had no such problem so there's a little tip for you pro tips so uh, you get the pro tips for staying to the end of the video. I know you have a choice when you choose to spend where you choose to spend your time, and I appreciate that you chose to spend some here with me. Your support means the world to me.